Okay, it's 1124 at WILK. For clarification purposes, Larry Hohall is here. His last name is spelled H-O-H-O-L. Okay, got that so far? Luzerne County Railroad is the book. It is in paperback. He's at the Barnes & Noble Arena Hub Plaza, Wilkes-Barre, on a Sunday at, at 2. And if people can't make it, the book is still on sale, even if they don't see right. you. They, you right. You can either get it at the Barnes & Noble, go to barnesandnoble.com, uh, or my website is the Luzerne County Railroad.com, and you can purchase the book there also. Okay, so you can you can Google it. This and, is- and my blog is on that, uh, that site, too. Uh, a lot of people have been following my comments. I've been making predictions, especially about the Chivarella case and all that before things happen. Yeah, and even you, you've been doing a little work with the, uh, I've noticed you've been kind of infiltrating the newspaper websites and putting, sign me! Yes, yeah, sign right, that's me. That's you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's Sign me. me. Yep. We'll sign uh, Joe from the Back Mountain onto the air. Hi, Joe. How you doing, Sue? <laughs> Thanks for letting me in. Uh, hats off to you and Larry. Uh, I'm familiar with his business, not not to a great degree, but I mean, I've been an area resident for a long time, and it's, it's a shame what happened to this man. Uh, a member of my family, too, going years back, my great-grandfather had a large uh, tr- trademark medicine business, and his was more of a federal level. The FDA stepped in and pretty much put the clamps down on his uh, enterprise, but uh, this man took lemons and made lemonade, and uh, God bless him, and hats off to him. I just wanted to see, uh, mention that uh, Representative Boback uh, got some legislation going where <clears throat> those who uh, plead guilty to corruption are going to lose their pensions, and I think it's a, it's a start. Cats off to Representative Boback for that. <clears throat> Pardon me, because that's the problem in the whole country. As Larry said, it's not just here. It's in other yeah. states. It's nationwide. You got that right, Joe. I have to, I have to let you go because we're so backed up. Okay, but as always, so. we appreciate it. This is Walter from Wilkes-Barre. Hey, Walter. Hi, uh, Larry. I was wondering on this Judge Capolini. Uh, was his son uh, convicted or connected with drugs and alcohol not too long ago and found guilty and put on probation where he could put his probation out in uh, Arizona or Nevada? Uh, I write about that extensively in my book. Uh, yeah, he was found guilty. He pled guilty, not found guilty. He pled guilty, mm-hmm. uh, was put on probation, was ordered to have random drug testing, which did not occur. Mm-hmm. And then when he w- finally was tested because someone blew the whistle on it, uh, he came back hot for cocaine and heroin. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, there was an attempted cover-up in the probation office, which was exposed, and a probation officer was arrested, but at a later date found not guilty. Mm-hmm. I have to point that out. Uh, but uh, James Marinello, in, in the meantime, who was the assistant chief of the probation office, ended up being fired over this whole incident as he was targeted as the whistleblower. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I write extensively about his case in my book. It, 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 what happened to James? James Marinello is a true tragedy. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable. I, I thought I knew the story until I researched it for the book. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know ten percent of the story. Well, my question is connected with that: is how many people that were convicted or found guilty of drugs and alcohol were able to p- put on probation that they can go out to Arizona or Nevada and? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mentioned that in my book, and uh, uh, also the fact that I have researched Arizona, that is supposedly where he went, and I haven't found anywhere that his probation was transferred to out there. Uh, and, and he may very well have been, and I just haven't found it. But I've been looking. Thanks, Walter. Hang around a little bit longer. Won't you stay just a little bit longer like the song? Larry Hohal is here this morning, and he has a book, Luzerne County Railroad. It's 1134 at WILK. Larry Hohal is still here with me because you're still calling and you're still interested, so uh, we've maintained him as a guest for the for the better part of the morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're most welcome. And you're going to uh, be at the Barnes & Noble Arena Hub Plaza Wilkes Spray to sign your book on Sunday at uh, 2. Luzerne County Railroad is the name of the book. You can Google Larry. His last name is spelled H-O-H-O-L. Larry is his first name spelled the regular way. John from Butler County joins us, which makes me happy. Hi, John. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing fine. I think I've found how the judges are being paid off at least in Butler County. We're all ears. Yeah, do tell. Oh, there's one judge in, in particular. No president. names, please. Pardon me? No name. Oh, there's one in particular. He's got over 30 loans or mortgages, uh, which far exceed his salary. 
Oh, well, that, that's, I think that's someone's a biggie. making the payments because I was involved before him on a mortgage foreclosure. I found a a uh, loan in another county, and the satisfaction piece was recorded in Butler County. Mm -hmm. I found that after about the fifth or sixth time, I checked his financial records at the courthouse. Have you have you given any of this to the FBI? Ah, uh, well, I just met with somebody last week who has come up with 30 of these transactions in addition to the 20 that I found oh. several years ago. Okay. Uh, this individual was sending letters to the surrounding counties to send the juveniles to the uh, detention center in Emlinton. Um, you may want to speak to someone about this. Well, uh, other than another individual who has done similar research, you may want to take together or gather the research and sure. give it to. Would you have them call Philadelphia, or would you have them? Where would you have Scranton them? Scranton office of the FBI. Call the Scranton office of the FBI. Right. This is like an oct a multi-headed hydra. It's an octopus. The arms reach. Oh yeah. Well, everywhere. again, if you and someone else have done the homework and you can present it, then I, if I were you, I would take it one level further than just talking about it. Well, I have been singled out for. It. For extinction, they ruined my business. Oh yeah. Uh, take my well, home. Larry wouldn't know about that because he only lost what millions of dollars. Millions. Well, millions, millions, millions. Right. Yeah. So he's his is. Yeah. You know, every similar. time I go to the courthouse to do titles now, yeah, you know, the goons are there. Well, you know, it 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 just makes my blood boil when I hear stories like this, and um, we need to just stop it. We and, have, it's it's well, our job. Is, I've I've been involved in 25 years of litigation. Uh, this same individual's been involved in incarcerating me, uh, issuing a bogus protection of abuse order so that the presiding judge in uh, my ex-girlfriend's divorce case could acquire her marital home and other property worth $2.5 million. Then he had the gall to send a 1099 to the IRS stating he bought it for $250,000. Then he and his law partners turned around and borrowed Two point five million on this person's marital property. There's no way that this possibly could have happened. This is you're making all this up, right? No, it, it's all true. I know. And the the yes. tie-ins, all these attorneys and judges, they all went to law school together. Mm -hmm. All the laws are drafted by attorneys. There's one tight, corrupt clique in this state. It goes across county and state lines. It, it, it absolutely does. And when I see the Pennsylvania Bar Association trying to take the lead on reform, it makes me want to vomit. Uh, I refer to this as the Underground Railroad of Corruption. And we've got conductors and engineers across the whole state. Well, uh, there's there's something that needs to be jo done, John, from Butler County. You need to take some action of your own. And you may feel that you're, you know, just uh, tilting at a windmill, but I think you need to do it. Well, there's, there's contact between these groups, be back and forth between the Scranton area. Get the FBI involved and, as soon as you can. Call, and they're, 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 call Philadelphia, using, then. Retired call. judges now as the circuit writer of corruption to rubber stamp. Did, did you file a complaint with the Judicial Conduct Board? Uh, a number of them. I've met with their people. Forward, forward me copies of them. You, you uh, I don't know if I can find them. A lot of them were in my home when they, they took all my personal properties. They also took about three or four years of of intense title work and maps that I did on the Marcella shell. Mm -hmm. I never received any of my personal papers back. Uh, when they when they took my house, they sold it for three hundred dollars. <sighs> one of one a website that I put together. It's not a website. It's an email address. Uh, if you find your your complaints, and this is for anybody out there that's ever filed a complaint with the Judicial Conduct Board, it's uh, JCB Complaints at live dot com. JCB Complaints at live dot com. That's all one word. JCB Complaints at live dot com. And send me what you have. And it wasn't too long ago, uh, maybe two years ago, if you would have sent those to me, you would have been uh, in violation of the law. There was a secrecy uh, clause with the JCB that nobody could share any information concerning any complaint about any judge anywhere in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, or you could be imprisoned. You could be fined. You could be a whole bunch of bad things could happen to you. And they did it to people. They weren't kidding around. They didn't want anybody knowing what was going on. And a, a guy by the name of Gene Stillip uh, uh, posed that. 
and uh, went to a federal court, uh, Third Circuit, and got that uh, removed uh, as uh, unconstitutional. So now you can share that information. So Wilkes please Perry do. native Gene Stilp, uh, John, best of luck. We will take the break. Stick around. You're listening on 910 in Scranton, 980 Wilkesbury, 1300 Hazleton, and 103.1 FM.